Hello, everybody. So I burned myself out at work, and I figured I would just take a couple of days to play a video game. And I picked this one, Pillars of Eternity. It's actually pretty good for what it is, but I'm not here to review it. If you are interested in RPGs, you've probably already seen the reviews, and my review is, yeah, it's good. Um, but I wanted to talk about the design elements of this game, specifically because I'm, I am making an RPG engine, and it would make sense to have some design talks on the records, and whether or not they can be baked into the engine or not is another question entirely. So when I talk about design, I am going to end up talking about uh, the bad things. I'm going to be sticking my fingers into the cracks of the design and wiggling. That doesn't mean the game is bad. Uh, it just means that I am talking about the pieces that don't fit very well, or, or fit quite well, either way, uh, but it is important for me to uh, find the flaws and find the good fits, and that's going to make it sound like the game has some serious flaws. They're not, they're not that bad, they're pretty good. Boom, go down, please. So, what I'd like to talk about today is the NPC method used. I don't know whether to call it the Bioware method or the Obsidian method, both of them have used it a lot. Uh, I guess I would call it the dominant Western RPG method. And this is a method of creating NPCs which hooks them into the game world in a specific way. Uh, you might call it the backstory method. Basically all of the characters are generic template characters, but what you do is you hook them into the world. So, for example, if you were to go into Mass Effect, you can pick any one of the characters, and they're very templatey. If you pick one of the Krogans, for example, in any of the games, uh, they're a very generic warrior character, super generic, but they're hooked into the universe, so they look interesting, and they have interesting things to say about the universe. And their loyalty mission is in-universe and expands on something interesting. And if you carry them around with you, when you run into events that are related to their universe, uh, their area of the universe, they can say something, they can do something, they can change the course of events. This method works really well, uh, at least in most games. This is largely because there are a lot of them, like between five and nine, and you only have to get along with two of them because your party is a grand total of three, you and two of these NPCs. So they're very generic, but if you don't like any of the specific generic elements, you can just leave those characters in the background. They'll level up in the background, and if you need to do their, their quest or whatever, you can always just bring them to the forefront for a short while. I don't know of anyone who's played Mass Effect and could say that they liked five of the characters in any given game. Maybe the last game, because there were a lot of characters. But in general, two is a good number because a lot of the generic characters are going to be obnoxious or annoying or otherwise rub you in the wrong way. You don't know who is going to be rubbed wrong by which characters. It really depends on their personality and their interests. For example, I cannot imagine playing Dragon Age carrying around that tattooed elf. He is just the most obnoxious character I've seen in quite a while. But a lot of people did like him and a lot of people did put him in their party. He's not a character that actually exists. He's a template, and he has got, he's got some backstory to hook him into the world. So if, I, if you like that template, you're going to be okay with the character. If you don't like the template, you're not going to be okay with the character. And this game does the same thing. So I have uh, Elfie Elf here. Elfie Elf is an elf, and he elfs. Um, he is what I would call the caustic nerd character. Um, as you might expect, there are... Uh, a lot of nerdy characters in these RPGs. There's always at least one. The problem is that those characters tend to be pretty boring. Um, I think that if you want to have a nerdy character in your game, uh, then you might get along with this guy okay, but I, I just he has nothing to add to the conversation for me. His link to the world is that he has a split personality because of the uh, very silly soul mechanics that they put into this universe. So, that also is not very interesting. I mean, um, an actual split personality or similar mental illness might have been interesting, but this is a magical split personality that follows very specific rules, and it's just the most boring thing imaginable. I lie. It's not the most boring thing imaginable. It's just very, very boring. The most boring thing imaginable is Marlboro Man. 
Now Marlboro Man is uh, a guy who shoots cigarette ads. And this is him. You can't hear his voice because I turned it off. But he sounds like he's filming a cigarette ad. And he's lit like he's filming an ad. And he's just, you know, I'm the down-home cowboy character. I'm quiet and I always do things the right way. And, ooh, uh, man, I, I just can't stand him. Um, so whatever you like or dislike comes into this game uh, just the same way it came into any, anywhere else. And I can find two NPCs that I like. There are enough NPCs that I can map out two that I like. The only problem is in this game, you've got six character slots, not three. I have to find five NPCs that I like. This is further complicated because there are like 12 different classes. There's a lot of different classes. And Etter here is the only warrior you encounter. At least the only one I've ever encountered. As far as I can see, there's one NPC of each class buried in the game. Uh, maybe in the late game you find more. I haven't gotten that far yet. But this means that if you want to have a warrior in your party, you've got to have Etter. Or make yourself the warrior. And that's just really bad because Etter is just not even vaguely interesting. I find him very grating. So, uh, the game offers you an alternative, a nice alternative, so that you don't have to worry about Edder. And that would be this character here. This is an NPC I built on my own. She's exactly the opposite of Edder. She is a different species, a different gender, comes from a different place, has a different personality. I just wanted a character that was as far from Edder as possible. And she serves the exact same combat role as Edder. Only problem is, she has absolutely nothing to say. She has no dialogue at all. And this is one of the places where uh, this game fell flat trying to implement the, the standard Bioware or, or um, Obsidian NPC method. It allows you to create your own NPCs, but those NPCs don't fit into the same framework. They don't have backstories. They aren't connected to the world. There's nothing about them that pops in and pushes the game forward or, or makes the character more interesting to you or comments on the situation as it unfolds. Events don't go differently if you've got these guys in your party. So, Blockade here will never be an actual character. She'll just be a bundle of stats. And assuming I don't want to miss out on scads of dialogue, plot, uh, items, and quest lines, uh, gold experience, if I don't want to miss out on those things, I've got to have Edder in my party instead of Blockade. I've got to put Generic Marlboro Man in instead of Blockade. Now, I suppose I can live with Aloth. He's, a, he's obnoxious, but he's the only mage you encounter, and I do like magicians. But I'm not going to put Edder in my party. And so I've just cut myself down. I've, I'm missing out on roughly one twelfth of the game's NPC content. Of course, Blockade is a much more interesting character than Edder, um, even just going on nothing but her existing. She's already more interesting than Edder because she's not shooting a cigarette ad. So the weaknesses of the Bioware or Obsidian method are really showing, and uh, it's a shame that they continue to use it even when the method stops working, because this it doesn't work in this game. Moreover, for some reason they decided that the background characters that aren't in your party would not gain experience. Not sure why they did that, but it makes the game even worse, um, makes the party system even worse, because now you've got characters that are horribly underleveled. Eh, yeah, not, not great. Now, there are a lot of other scaffolds that people aren't looking into and aren't using because this scaffold is now quite dominant. One of the things you can do is you can move all of this window content outside of the party. This is how it used to be. If you played the old uh, old Dungeons and Dragons games, for example, you'd make yourself a party of five or six characters, or four characters, whatever. They wouldn't have anything interesting to say, but you'd go out into the world, and all of the interesting things would be embedded in the world. You'd talk to NPCs, you'd have quests pop up, and all that stuff. All of your windows would be outside of your party, so that you could build your party however you would like, and it would all work out. There is something to be said for having uh, a group of characters that actually interacts with the world, though. That's a very powerful tool, so I wouldn't want to just give up on that. 
but there's no reason it has to be using these seated characters. Edder's uh, plot is that he has a brother that he respected quite a lot and he worried that he was on the wrong side of the war when his brother chose the other side. I can't imagine any character that couldn't be the plot for. Um, Blockade here could have had a brother that was on the other side and she could have been like, I'm not sure I was on the right side because he was on the wrong side and he was on, you know, I, he's generally right. That would have worked just as well for this character. The amount of rewriting that would have been necessary to make it fit any character that we stuck into this fighter role, or into any, any role, whatever we'd like, is minimal. You might have had to make sure that some of the dialogue had male and female variants or uh, just generic pronouns. It would not have been difficult to make this character Edder, and Edder could have not shown up at all, and it could have been Blockade instead. Now, she still would have talked like she was filming a cigarette ad all the time, but it would have been a little bit more bearable. At the very least, I would have known that it was my mess that I created. Similarly, Aloth, there's nothing special about his character. Um, it's not like he's got any superpowers that are bound up in his being an elfy character with a second personality. It's just what he is. So, I could have easily created a character to fill this role and just dumped his plotline on that character. Uh, you know, it could have been Blockade. Blockade can have a second personality. Blockade can have the stupid soul fiddledy-gunk happening. And she can say those things. This is also a very powerful tool because you can stop having a main character. Your main characters are bad. Stop having them. So this is the main character I built. Uh, the first two times I played through, I didn't actually finish the game, but I played through with characters that I liked. Um, and it's super generic. But your main character has a special, you know, superpower that makes her awesome, or him awesome. And you wander through the game, and you choose generic good or generic evil options, and very standard. Uh, this time I chose the most grating voice and a rogue character, and I'm going to go through and I'm going to just tear the place down. But the main character is not very interesting and shouldn't exist. Um... If you have a party mechanic, if you have a party system, I think it's best if all your party members are not necessarily equal, but all are equally interesting. And that can be done using this uh, generic method that I was talking about. If I built a whole bunch of characters and I got to choose... If I, if I built six characters and I got to choose six plot arcs based on their personalities, you know, like, oh yeah, you've got the down-home character. If you choose that personality, then you're going to have the brother plot arc. And they're going to say all the the plot arc stuff that pops up in game when they're talking to peasants and whatever, they're going to be the down-home character. And if you choose the split personality, then that's what you're going to be. You're going to be the, the nerdy character that has the split personality and pops into conversation whenever magic comes up. And all that stuff, all these characters, their plots can all be made generic. Um, there's nothing about them that requires that they look a specific way or be a specific gender, aside from the female characters, the women in this game, which are all written as women. Um, it's very much a sausage fest game. Uh, I've only found two women, and they're both, uh, they both deal very strongly with, uh, with women's roles, and that is something that you might have to lock down here and there. You might be like, well, you, you have to be a woman to play this role, or you have to be a fighter to play that role, or whatever. There are some places you could lock it down, but I think that would be much more acceptable, um, and it would also not make me hate the characters, because I would be putting my own face onto them. I would be, uh, I would be deciding, you know, who they are and what they are and what they're like. That isn't to say that that would be a good solution for every game. I think that the Bioware or Obsidian method works well for three party games, three character parties. Uh, if you have a three character party then it makes sense for you to let the game designate the NPCs because they're going to be weaving in and out. They're going to be like, okay, well, now we've got to bring in this character and push out that character. We've got to make this work and that work. Uh, if you have a few party members, then that works. You've got a very specific um, set of, uh, of progressions, of character progressions, and that would be fine. Uh, but when you have six characters, there's really no need to swap characters in and out. You've got all your characters that you are going to need uh, all at the same time. There's no no, no particular worries about uh, you know whether or not you're going to have to swap character A in or character A out. So 
So when you have a lot of characters, I would argue that you should make your characters... Um, if you're going to allow the player to create characters, you should allow them to create the characters that are in the party, er, in the in the game world. How did that use up both of her knockdowns? Well, whatever. And it's not really that hard. You just have to make sure that you understand that you're building the um, the framework around a face that doesn't exist yet. Maybe it would be difficult to write something that you would consider interesting if you don't know what player the face is, what what the face is going to be for a given player. There might be some drawbacks here and there, but by and large, it's not necessary to have complex plot lines like those that are assigned to these characters. I don't need to have uh, you know this this convoluted plot where so and so's brother was in point A and then moved to point B and then went to point C and then did thing F. Uh, those are, are complexities that allow us to um, link the player into the world, but they're not required because that sort of thing can be embedded into the world, and I can meet generic NPCs that have that sort of request for me. The party characters that I'd like to have in my group Mostly, I'd like them to be relatable. I'd like them to have things that they say as the game unfolds and as events happen. Uh, I'd like them to have interesting things that they want to do, uh, or or any generic event have them spice it up some. And I think that that's perfectly reasonable, and a lot of these games do have that. I just uh, I just wish that it was more carefully codified so that it wouldn't suffer. I wouldn't have to worry about this situation where one of the characters is just unbearable, but I've got to leave him in because, you know, he's got all of the plot that I need to have. Anyway, uh, I'm still pretty burned out, and it's just I just woke up, so I'm hoping that this is um, something you can understand, something that was coherent. If not, I apologize. Uh, and I don't want to say that I didn't like the game. The NPCs are quite good uh, for what they are. They're very generic, but that's that's the name of the game these days. And the game is very solid. So uh, don't don't take my my critiquing as any sign that there is something wrong with the game. Embedding this sort of stuff into a game engine uh, would require some forethought, which is why I am thinking about it now. I'm thinking maybe there might be some way to make it so that the game engine uh, allows for you to write these sorts of genericized scripts. If I help the people who want to write it fit these sorts of scripts into their world, then it's more likely that they'll happen. But maybe it's not worth it. Haven't decided yet, uh, and I'm still pretty burned out, so I probably won't decide for a while. Thank you for your time.